Hello friends, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've been working on the Reproduction Mark 8 mini computer. While I'm not finished with it just yet, I will be starting another series, this time building the very first personal computer ever created, the Kenbuck One. The Kenbuck was introduced in 1971 by John Blank and Baker. The entire computer was designed with TTL chips and did not contain a microprocessor. The memory size was also very small, a mere 256 bytes. The computer was sold by Kimbuck Corporation and only around 40 units were sold before production ceased. This means that there aren't very many original Kimbuck wants in the wild, so don't expect one to show up on eBay anytime soon. The first appearance of the Kimbuck was in the magazine Scientific and American, uh, September 1971 issue. It was advertised for $750 on page 194. As we can see, this machine was not designed for business or scientific use, but more for educational and entertainment purposes. I've collected all the components that are required to build a fully functioning machine. Most of these components are originals from the 1970s era, and some of them are model replacements. The goal of this series is to build a reproduction quality Kimbuck One by using the same specs and sizes that were used by the original machine, including using time period components. So, for example, all the integrated circuits will be from the 1970s period. Some of the components, including the front panel lights and switches, will have modern replacements for the time being until I'm able to find originals. In order to not keep the series on pause for any longer, we will use modern replacements where originals cannot be found. This computer requires 131 7400 series ICs, most of which are fairly easy to find. The 1404A shift registers that are used for memory are a little harder to find. I did manage to purchase a few sets of them on eBay. A good amount of resistors are also required, and as you can see, the resistors are carbon composition and from the same time period as the original Kimbuck One. I tried to find new old stuck capacitors, and I believe I got most of them from that time period. The problem with capacitors is that they have an expiration and are not guaranteed to work, even if they have not been used for many years. The PCB was designed by Thomas Jones and is a replica of the original PCB. If you would like to purchase a PCB like this one, check out my hobby store at www.kalinchuk.com. I was able to create a gerber file for the PCB fabrication, and I will share that file if anyone is interested. The cost of the PCB is approximately $40 plus shipping, and is much cheaper than fabricating it yourself. Before continuing to other components, let me show off the case a bit. I got this case built by PCB Way, and they did a fantastic job on it. The original Kimbuck One used a Bud Industries Grand Prix case, and I was able to find the original drawings for that case. I believe it was Chris Davis who was able to pull the drawings from Bud Industries, which by the way is still around. The CAD files were then created using those drawings, so this case is an exact copy of the original Kimbuck one with a few slight differences, particularly on the rear panel since it's designed for modern power supplies. To get this case manufactured is quite expensive, but if you would like to acquire one, I will include a link in the description for the CAD files, which you can then upload to PCBWay. The link will include detailed instructions on how to configure the order so that it comes out like this case. The project link includes vector files for the front panel and CAD files for each part. You can simply download the CAD files if you wish, or click Add to Cart to add it to your order. For the top and bottom pieces, we want to select sheet metal and quantity of 2 since we want a top and a bottom piece and they are the same thing. Select mild steel for the material. Under surface finish, we can select powder coat and then powder coat matte and process blue color. The remaining configurations can remain as is. Finally, click submit request. 
for the side pieces, we can select CNC machining, quantity of two, since we need one for each side, and select Submit Request. The rear panel is also sheet metal, but we only need a quantity of one. Select mild steel for the material, powder coat matte, and color process blue for the surface finish. Finally, click add to cart for the front panel. This one is fairly simple. Select sheet metal and quantity of one. We will leave the material as aluminum, but for the surface finish, we will select brush to get a nice brushed aluminum look to it. Once you click submit request, most of these pieces will go through a quote process, which is relatively quick. After a few hours or days, you should receive the final price of all the pieces. And you can then submit your payment and the fabrication process will begin. The case is pretty solid and heavy. Most of it is made from steel and only the side pieces and the front panel are aluminum. PCBWay will ship the case in a solid box so you will receive it without any nicks or damages. It will still require some drilling to finalize it but it isn't difficult to accomplish at home. I plan to list these cases on the store at www.calinchuk.com once I figure out how to make them more affordable. But for now you'll have to go through PCBWay to build one. Let's take a look at the remaining components and then talk about the build plan for this computer. The rear panel was designed to accept two small fans, but they may not be required at all, especially if using a modern switching power supply. The original Kimbug had a Barber Coleman 120 volt fan, and I was fortunate enough to find a similar one on eBay. I plan to build a reproduction linear power supply that was used in the original computer, and I will install this fan with it. For the time being, I will use a modern switching power supply to test the computer to ensure everything is working properly before building and installing a linear power supply. I have all of the power supply components ready, all from the same time period. But I will set them aside for now since we'll be using a modern power supply that I got from DigiKey. It outputs positive 5 volts and negative 12 volts. The original Kimbuck 1 used incandescent lamps for indicators on the front panel. I wasn't able to find matching lamps that drew less than 40 milliamp of current, so we will use the following LEDs for now. I do have some low current incandescents that might work, but I will need to modify them first. Same with the switches. The original computer used Rayathon glass switches that were glued to the front panel. We will use standard MX key switches which clip in nicely into the switch ports. The keycaps are also modern and we have many options in terms of colors, but I will probably use two or three colors only. The remaining components are simple switches, fuse holders, fuses, wires, etc. Finally, you may notice that we have sockets for ICs here. While I would like to assemble this board without IC sockets, just like the original, since it's my first time building this computer, I would like to have the option to remove or swap out ICs while testing it. The next board that I will assemble will be without IC sockets to mimic the original computer. For those that are interested in building this computer with me, I will have the PCB available for purchase from the hobby store that I mentioned, but you will have to source all the components on your own. Some of the components, like the 1404A shift registers, might be a little harder to find. Because of this, I will also have a kit option available for purchase which will include the PCB and all the components, although they will not all be from the 1970s era. The kit will not include the case since it's quite expensive, but the case can be purchased or fabricated separately. The assembly instructions and a copy of the original documentation, such as the theory of operation document, will also be included with the kit. 
Keep in mind that the kit assembly instructions might differ slightly with the way it will be assembled here, since I'm using slightly different components. If you're interested in the kit, be on the lookout since I will be posting it in the store soon. Due to the amount of integrated circuits and hard to find components, expect the kit to be priced around $600 to $800. That is it for this video. In the next few videos, I will be assembling the case, PCB, and the front panel. I will also make a video on building the reproduction linear power supply to replace the temporary one that I will be using. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.